Here's the Nunak for the land. And it's anything from the land into the moon, the sun, the stars. That's Sila. It's, uh, it's a very spiritual, and we have a relationship with Sila. Uh, Sila has a soul in the same way we do as people, in the same way animals do. I think spirit helpers in and of themselves are really about how we're connected with things. And so it may be that there is a spirit helper that shows themselves as a bird to show you the way home. Or it may be a spirit helper that actually decides to show themselves with the face and body of a man instead of their animal form. And so I think one of the things that's hard to understand is that it's not one way of seeing things. It's one way of knowing you're connected to everything. We've always had that spirituality of everything around us. It's the interaction you have with the air you breathe, the, the ocean that you gather resources from, the rivers from which you gather fish, the tundra right. from which you pick berries, the animals that give themselves. It's, it's all of all of that. All right, so I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything. Yeah, we didn't miss anything. All right. Cool. I don't know. I'm kind of liking it. I didn't know Nuna, her name, meant land. Okay. And those are spirit animals. Okay. Her. Okay. The girl and the fox kept each other. Out of so much trouble. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of animals in the world. I don't know how they did it. Oh, there is a lot of animals in the world. But together they found their way back home. That makes sense. Like I went in the Arctic water. Damn it! Makes sense. Horse shit! Okay, come on. Alright, wait for it. I hear it. Get up. Get up. Stop being a baby. Whee! Come on. Get up, get up, get up. And book it. Ah! Go! No, no, no! Okay. It's obvious she wasn't getting through that. <laughs> oh, watch Trapping Trail. In the winter, when we were traveling, we didn't build sod houses, we built snow houses. In Canada, they call them igloo, but here in Alaska, we call them apuya. We do a day of travel, apuya. and then we'd make an apuya. The next day, my father would set traps spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat, and then the following day, we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at the barn. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. we just visit with them, and my dad and my sister were glad to see each other, and they'd talk away while us kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt or with my grandmother. And then he'd start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into 8 to 5 kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different kind. We're in ecological time. I think he meant 9 to 5. All right. OK. Oh, this way. Wait, what am I? Oh. What am I doing? Alright, and go down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Thought I switched. I hit circle like a dumbass. Alright, get up there. Make it over here, and get over here, and go, and... Come on. There. Oh. I was watching the fox. 
<laughs> I almost messed that up big time. I haven't slept for like 20 some hours, so. Bear with me. Whee! I love these strange kind of. This is actually not bad water. Considering, like, you really don't really need to look at it at all, it's not bad at all. Get up there, buddy. Okay. Keep going, man. Hmm? Okay, what's up? Uh oh. I hope this isn't like a bedtime story. Are you telling me that I have something new to watch? No. The girl arrived at her village. But something was terribly wrong. A terrible man with one tooth had arrived while the girl was away. Oh no, he has multiple tooths. One's big. He was searching for something. It's like he has a shoe and would stop at nothing. It literally, that looks like a shoe until he found it. It's clearly an axe, but it looks like a shoe. Oh, now I, the village was totally devastated. Now I see it's an accident. Damn, they only have one speed. Super slow-mo. Holy crap. It is said that with each gust of wind, the powdery snow blew in every direction. Robert Cleveland. The girl could not believe what she saw. Everything in sight was destroyed. Her people were gone. How could this be? It couldn't have just been the blizzard. Get it. Where are we going? What the hell was that noise? But the loons weren't the only ones to arrive. Sorry, I was... I was way busy watching that swan thing. Strange little people emerged from underground. Oh, there they are. I see them in the... Ah! The scavenge, the ruins of the village. Oh. Alright, go down here. Shut up. No oh, way, use it, use it. Oh shit! Forgot this game is a lot about patience. <sighs> And you. Go that way. Stop hitting circle. You know it's triangle. Alright, get over here, buddy. Come on. I'm going to game. Come here, granddaughter. <laughs> said the owl man. How does he know me? I thought the girl. Yeah, there's now. We're gonna get a movie. Because I've been watching over you. If I only had my drum, I could help you find the one who, who <laughs> did this to your village. Alright. Really? You don't, you don't give me anything? Stupid Al, you're supposed to give me something. 
Oh, this one does. Here's the heartbeat of the community. Drum is something that's common to all cultures in Alaska. All cultures have a drum that may have some stylistic differences or differences in the materials that it's made, but it's still a recognition of life and vitality. And the drum mirrors the heartbeat. And when you continue drumming soon, it will be in line with your heartbeat. Because that's what it's supposed to be, the heartbeat of the community. And it symbolizes vitality. All right. And it's, it's the most tremendous feeling to be in a room and to have one long row of all the drummers and to have that feeling of unity, everyone beating in harmony, the drum beat in unison. It's the most beautiful feeling. And to know that you're connected, you're on the land that you are connected to. And even if you grew up outside of the community, that which is in you comes from this area. And it's, it's the greatest feeling. <laughs> Man, I respect how difficult it must have been for these guys to show their lifestyle, you know what I mean? In, in this time, where people are just so closed-minded about other people's beliefs and the crap going on, it can't be difficult, but they did it. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. Shut up, little person. Yeah. <laughs> Wee! Get him! Oh, I should have turned into the fox and bit him. Watch little people. Little people! They're just like other people. They just happen to be very small and extremely strong. These are stories that are common throughout Alaska. It's normally that people are you know, size from your elbow to the tips of your fingers, and they possess superhuman strength. So they may be tiny, but they can carry a whole caribou. And if you go up north and you talk to a number of the people in the community, they'll talk about having seen the little people. There's a place at home that we know, but we don't profess it to anybody. But it's not like the boogeyman. They can be mischievous, they can be ornery, or they can be helpers. And every now and then, we might have the opportunity to see them, especially if they want us to see them. The fact that it's across Alaska really tells you something about our history and how we interacted with nature around us. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Uh, oh, to move. Why don't you just shut up? Uh, uh, go. Get off it, fat ass. Get off it. Get off you fat shit. Get, get the fuck. You pull faster than this horse shit. She uses one. I was gonna say, what the fuck? There it is. Okay, I was gonna say. I don't even know what I need this for. Oh, now I do. All right, get up there. Whee! Now what? It's over here. The drumming was their drumming was interrupted by the girl. And they came out to see who was making all the noise. Oh shit! Look it! No! Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna make it. Shit. I'm gonna try to make it while this video ends. Please, guys, like, comment, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.